Hey YouTube, what's going on? I have a match today that was against the Towering Tyranitar, and it was an RU match, so let's just jump right into it. So, um, he kind of requested a battle, mm, I was trying to post this about two days ago. But yeah, so anyways, he leads off with an Aerodactyl, um, also known as Extinct, and I lead off with DK, the Primate. And I am Choice Scarf, so I know I can outspeed him. And I go for the Stone Edge first turn and miss. So that was kind of disappointing um, as he sets up his Stealth Rock. So I will go for the Stone Edge again and actually land it this time. But because of the fact that I missed, um, that will basically mean that now he's able to hit me with whatever move he wants to. Um, because if I had hit the two, uh, looking at that, I don't know if he has a Focus Sash. But even if he did, I would have been able to easily two-hit KO. But that Earthquake does a decent chunk, and I'm just going to go into my Pharaoh Seed. Take a little bit from Stealth Rock, and he's going to go for the Earthquake. Now, I am max HP, max defense, and that doesn't really do too much, so I look, it looks like I am safe to stay in here. So he goes for the second Earthquake, and I'm going to hit him with a Gyro Ball, which will easily knock him out from that range. So... Score now is 6-5, and yeah, so he goes into his Tomb Raider, or his Spirit Tomb, and this thing really isn't that threatening to my team at all. So he does go for the will o -Wisp, which kind of uh, seals the deal for Pharaoh Seed, because he really can't do much now that he's burned. Um, neither of us have a spinner on, this on our team, so we will not be able to spin away the Stealth Rocks, but that's, that's okay. Because right here, I don't know why, but he goes for the Pursuit. I resist it, and I have the ability, of course, Iron Barbs. And that's going to do, of course, a decent chunk to him as I get the Leech Seed on him. So now I'm able to withstand a little bit. I'm not going to last too long, though, because of that burn, even with the Leech Seed recovery. So he's going to get his lefties, and I am going to get the Leech Seed. And because of Leech Seed and burn, um, I'm at 107 then 145, and I'm only getting 2 HP back from that, so I have no reason to try and predict anything here, so I'm just going to go straight for the Gyro Ball, and that actually works out for me because he goes into a Sceptile, which will, since it's pretty fast, that will take a decent chunk, even though I am burned. So, he goes for an Earthquake here, and I expected him to actually take it, and he does, living with 28 HP. And I'm able to hit him with a second gyro ball, which will take him pretty low as I go down from the burn. So, that is okay for me. Score is 5-5. Five, five. And I go into my prime ape here. And like I said, I am scarf, so I know I can outspeed. And I don't want to go for the close combat, because that would be way too obvious. And he still has this spirit tomb here. And he also has this cool fish, which could, which could easily take that. So instead, I'm going to go for the safe U-turn to get some switch initiative. And that U-turn really did do a decent chunk, so I am in a pretty decent position here to just send out my Choice Bandit Entei. And of course, since it's the event one, it is shiny and it will have Flare Blitz, Extreme Speed, and all that. So, I exert the pressure, and he gets his leftovers, which will take him just over half. So, like I said, Choice Band, Adamant, Flare Blitz, that will easily take out this Spear Tomb, especially after seeing how much that U-turn did from the Prime Ape. So, score now, 5-4, and looking pretty good. But like I said earlier, he does still have this Quillfish, which is a very, very good physical wall in RU. And he gets the Intimidate, which essentially takes away my Choice Band boost, and he can resist the Flare Blitz for days and do a decent chunk of damage to me. So I switch, and I go into my Spirit Tomb. Take a little bit from Stealth Rocks. And I'm exerting my pressure, so... He does go for the spikes on the switch, but... Uh, you'll see in the next series of turns here, that this Spear Tomb really proved to be a big, big problem for him. Um, and right away, I don't really know why, because Spear Tomb is already dirt slow. Um, he goes for the Thunder Wave, and it doesn't really benefit him too much in the long run. But this Spear Tomb is one of those, you know, pretty annoying... Mono attackers with rest, sleep talk, calm mind, and dark pulse. So, like I said, um, he really can't do too much to me 
um, once I start setting up, except for the fact that he does have the haze, so we can take away my Calm Mind boost at any time. So, took away my boost, so now I'm, uh, after this turn, I am at plus one special attack and spec D. So he's getting his Black Sludge, as he goes for the haze once again. All stat changes once again are eliminated, and I get paralyzed, which is kind of awful. But right here he switches. Um, I don't really. Th I think he knew he really couldn't do much, even though he could take away my stat boost whenever. And I just kept wanting to go for the Calm Mind because I knew eventually he would want to switch, since, like I said, he couldn't do anything to me. So I get up a good Calm Mind boost, and this Gallade probably was scarfed. I don't really know. Um, but he hits me with the Night Slash, and that does absolutely nothing um, as I hit him with a plus one Dark Pulse, which, you know, I'm not invested in any special attack, but that still does nearly 50% to him, and he switches out, and he does go into his Magneton. Now, it seems like I am this thing counters me completely, but I do go for the Calm Mind once again as he switches, and even though he does resist the Dark Pulse, he really can't do too much to me while I have um, my Calm Mind boost going, and yeah, so he's going to go for the Thunderbolt, and it's going to do a pretty decent chunk um, as I get off the Dark Pulse. Now, like I said, this is, I think, a plus two um, Dark Pulse, and that still does a decent chunk, especially for the fact that he does resist it, and he's most likely, I'm pretty sure he was holding the Avi Light, so he goes for the Thunderbolt again. And he will knock me down to a decent chunk, but I am going to go for the rest to get back up to full HP and get off that annoying paralysis. So, like I said, going to get back up to full HP, and I'm going to start sleepy, sleep talking away. Um, but I really don't get that lucky with sleep talking these first few turns here, as he goes for the Volt Switch, and he's going to switch right back in to his Quillfish, because he wants to haze, and he wants to get rid of these boosts. And, you know, he takes some from Stealth Rock, gets the Intimidate, which really doesn't matter at all for him. And I'm asleep, and I'm going to want to go for the Sleep Talk, so I do, and I pull the rest. So that was completely useless. And he gets his Black Sludge, and I'm going to get my lefties, so... I'm still in a pretty good position. I do have that plus two spec D and spec defense, or spec special attack and special defense. But he goes for the haze once again, and I know he's clearly a physical wall, so I'm going to keep going for the sleep talk, hopefully to pull a dark pulse, but I get the rest once again. So at this point, it's just free recovery for the both of us. Nothing is really happening. I'm sure, he's taken away my call mind boost, but. Like I said, this Spiritomb really proves to be a big problem for him. And he goes for the Scald, which I find kind of weird. I typically see, you know, Waterfall being the much more viable option. And the fact that he has Thunder Wave could really hold, you know, a pair of flinching set, which could really help. But I do just go straight for the Dark Pulse, and that does a decent chunk, even without any boosts or investment. So, at this point, I think he sees that, and he wants to save his Quillfish, and he's just going to go straight back into his Magneton to try and tank as many hits as he can from this. And I thought he would probably, you know, I was thinking maybe he's just going to keep going for the Skull and hopefully get the burn, but I just rested as he switched. So, now that I don't have any boost, this Magneton can really do a lot of damage, which is kind of scary for me. And I see that it does do just below um, a half, so it almost does 50%. But I do pull the Dark Pulse from the Sleep Talk, which is good. So, it does a decent chunk. Um, so, you know, this Spear Tomb is really doing a lot of work, really helping me in the match. But even after Leftovers, I guess this is like a min-max damage situation. Because the first one didn't even do half, and that second one wasn't even a crit, and it still did at least 173 or so, so now I'm gonna go into my DK, the Prime Ape, and this is basically the part where he ruins his, uh, he ruins Towering Tyranitar's day. Um, I don't know why, but he switched into his Sceptile, I guess, to, uh, fodder it out, which I don't think was a good choice. He could have clearly just gone into Quillfish, got the Intimidate, intimidate off and just resisted the hit pretty nicely but instead he decides to sack his uh, septile 
and he also goes into his Gallade. Now, Gallade really doesn't have the best physical defense, so I'll, I'm just going to stay in here and keep close combating, because if I were to switch in, I would die to entry hazards. So, that is a crit. I don't know if it mattered. I'll post a calc for you guys. But regardless, that's two down from Primate. So he's really helping a lot. And now he goes into his cool fish. And like I said before, this is what he really should have done in the first place. Because as you see, he does get the Intimidate off. And judging by the amount of damage that this does, you know, he really should have done that from the get-go. But I guess he, you know, didn't feel the need to. Not really sure about his thought process there. But... Yeah, so he's just going to take me out with the Scald, and yeah, Primate did a lot of work, and so did Spear Tomb, so they're definitely the MVPs in this match. So, now I'm going to go into my Entei, and I really, really want to take this Coolfish down, because it can be problematic, especially um, later on for any other physical sweepers. So, I go for the Stone Edge, luckily hit it. And like I said, Adamant, Choice Band, I highly, highly doubt he would live that. And I get a critical, critical hit. But I really don't know if that mattered or not. I don't think it did. Because like I said, Adamant, Choice Band, very, very high. I think base 115 attack. That does a lot of damage no matter what. So I go for the second Stone Edge, not wanting to switch out because entry hazards. And he goes for the T-Bolt. And that'll take me down. So at this point... I was kind of in a weird position because I do go into my Slow King and I'm going to take Entry Hazard's damage and I'm going to post a count because I really don't know how much this would normally do, but he seemed to be a somewhat bulky Steel Trapper and he goes for the Thunderbolt and I'm thinking, alright, all I have left on my team was a Skeptile or Sceptile and I live with 17 HP, that was insane and I kind of went for the risky move here, going for the Fire Blast. I should have probably just gone for the safe Scald, um, you know, Fire Blast, even though it did get a crit, that was a, you know, that was a guaranteed KO, but I think Scald still would have been the better option, so thank you, Tyro the Towering Tyranitar, for the match, uh, had a lot of fun, it was a very good match, and, um, of course, thank you all for watching, comment, rate, subscribe, and I will see you guys later.